Hey bio students, this is Mrs. Hammer. I'm here to give you an example of the meiosis simulation lab so you can go back and practice on your own. So we're going to walk through the steps together and you can watch this as many times as you need to in order to understand the process of meiosis. So we're going to start with the interphase cell because, and you do not have to do interphase um, in the lab, but I do want you to see where the chromosome numbers are coming from. So we're going to start with the interface um, cell. We may get interrupted by Miss Oberlin in the back, but that's okay. So interface, remember, it's going to start our original cell in G1 is going to have four chromosomes. And then in the S phase, as you guys all know, in the S phase, these chromosomes are going to duplicate or replicate. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm duplicating each one. I want to make sure they're the same size. Okay, so this is what your bag looked like. You had eight chromosomes to start with. Okay. In prophase one is where we are going to take these eight chromosomes and walk through the process of meiosis or start that. So we're going to go to prophase one. And in prophase one, some of the things that happen in prophase one are first, the nuclear membrane disappears, the centrioles and spindle fibers appear, homologous chromosomes pair to form tetrads, and crossing over would take place. So I'm going to show you the homologous pairing that's going to take place between tetrads. Remember, a homologous pair is a chromosome pair that has the same size, shape, centromere position, genetic um, information, and um, that's what I have here, is a tetrad or a homologous pair. I'm going to form another one here. So that's in prophase. Also in prophase, what would take place would be crossing over. Oops, one too many beads there. Crossing over would take place between these sister chromatids that are closest to each other in the tetrads. Dial extension zero, please. Okay, so I'm not going to cross them over at this point, but they would exchange genetic information. So that happens all in prophase one. So our tetrads are ready, our nuclear membranes disappeared, our spindles um, have appeared, and our centrioles have appeared. In metaphase one, these tetrads are going to line up along the metaphase plate, being Keep in mind where your spindle fibers are. Mine are right here going north to south. So our spindle fibers are here. Um, in part A of your lab, it asked you to put the same color, same side, so I'll do that for you, where you have red on both sides. But it really doesn't matter. It's actually random. So in metaphase, they line up. The spindle fibers are going to attach to the centromeres at the metaphase plate. Then we move on into anaphase. So I have anaphase 1 here, and I'm going to move these down because I think it's easiest that way to keep them in the middle. And then I know anaphase, the A is going to remind me to pull them apart, so I'm going to pull the tetrads, they're still tetrads, they're homologous pairs, apart to opposite poles. Okay. Now these are apart, we no longer have tetrads anymore. Easiest thing to do. It is now 151. All students should be in their sixth period class. Moving into telophase one, we're going to keep these that are at this pole still at that pole together. And in telophase, the cell starts pinching inward to start to form two new cells. Okay, so that's what's happening in telophase. By the end of meiosis one, we move into cytokinesis and we're going to have two cells. Notice that I kept the yellow together because they were at the pole together and I kept red together because they were at the pole together. So we have two new cells at the end of meiosis 1. These two cells are going to proceed into meiosis 2. So we're going to move them over into our cells for meiosis 2. Here is prophase 2. Okay, and in prophase 2 the chromosomes are going to condense again. The nuclear membrane disappears. There is no crossing over again. There are no tetrads and no homologous pairs. 
So this looks very familiar to you, probably from mitosis, what's happening here, okay? So the chromosomes condense and the centrioles and spindle fibers reappear. In metaphase two, these two cells, each of the chromosomes in these two cells are going to line up respectively in their own cell. Okay, keep them in the same cell together. So now we have two metaphase cells. This is metaphase two. Again, lined up in the middle with the spindle fibers attaching to the um, centromeres. If we did it like this, they would not be able to be pulled apart correctly. Okay, so they need to be next to each other. All right, in anaphase, each cell is going, I'm gonna move them down just like I had them in metaphase two. In anaphase two, they are going to get pulled to their own opposite poles. So I'll start with this one. These two get pulled and these two get pulled. And that's one cell. And then these two get pulled to opposites by the spindle fibers to opposite poles. So we have the formation almost of two new cells for each one of these, so four total. Moving into telophase two, the nuclear membranes are gonna to start to reappear. We've got pinching inward to form these separate cells. Remember, whatever you've already pulled together stays together. And these are going to start pinching inward to form four new cells. So we'll move into cytokinesis. I'm going to keep these two chromosomes together because they were here at the poles together. These two are at the poles together. Notice how they're not attached. They shouldn't be attached. They're individual chromosomes now. And these two are together. So at the end, we have one, two, three, four, what we call haploid cells. Remember at the initial start, in interphase, we had four chromosomes. Each one of these new cells has two. These new cells are called gametes, and they are haploid in number. That means they have half the number as the original cell. And that is how you, <laughs> that is how you, Simulate meiosis, and that's what you need to practice on your own as well. Thanks.